So here is part four of the Hair Kitty Kitty series. I'm on a solo trip. I'm out here in the morning. It looks like a mess over here because I got one pole out, put another one out, and it was in the process of getting this one out, and that thing started just screaming. And I already got one. I still haven't even got him off the hook yet. I did not even have, I didn't have half the poles put out yet. I didn't have the camera put up. Nothing. And we already got one. A little fatty. So, I'm going to put him back, see what time it is, and try to get these other rods in the water. That's a good way to start part number four. Okay, so it is... Uh, I think that, there we go, 8.19. 8.19 in the morning. This trip is going to be a little bit different because all the other trips have been of an evening well into the night. This one is going to be early in the morning until about noon, midday. So, we're going to see... We can get some more catfish coming to us already we've got one without even getting all the poles out so hopefully this continues to be a fun morning for sure all here is extremely extremely tight like i would never be able to bring someone else here but since it was a solo trip i come i can't even cast my rod from the bank literally you guys are the bank right now that's about a foot of bank and uh, i got these wader boots i'll show you guys those in a second it allows me to get out there and cast. All right, we're set up now. Finally got all the poles out. But before I got that last one out, I had this this same pole, lucky pole, from spot number three, went off again, and it had a little guy on it. So now I got this camera set up. We'll be able to get all the action. Finally, it's just a little guy, but hey, it's a fish this morning. Let's see what time it is. 8.33. Let's get it thrown back out. <laughs> see if we can get another one on it. Now while we finally have a second, I want to show you. This spot is literally like where you guys are. There's the bank. And I'm already in the water right here. So I have to get out here in the water to cast. It was either bring swimming trunks or stuff. But if you don't like wearing swimming trunks, you can get these wader boots. And you don't need an expensive pair. Just get a cheap pair. I think these were $45. They're the Cabela brand. But I can go out a pretty good ways here without getting wet. And now I'm, I'm probably 10 foot from the camera. I can cast my poles with these and without having to worry about getting them hung up in the trees above me and stuff. So I really like these boots. They help me out a lot uh, in places like this. That tree hanging down right here has mayflies all over it. <laughs> And there's a bird that keeps coming and landing on the branches and stirring them up. They come flying out everywhere. Oh, oh we just got hit. That hit was on the Sandy Cooper TWC combo again. Another tip I see some people sometimes they don't do, but if you're using the Sandy Cooper setup, you want to make sure that you have really really tight line you really really want to make sure your rod tips kind of already loaded up that way that sinker sitting on the bottom you got tight line and that floats picking it up like that if not i've seen before uh, when i leave too much slack in it i have a little piece of bait on there i'll see before my bobber just sitting out there on top of the water because the bait or the weight wasn't up against the swivel and stuff holding it down had too much slack and let it all float up. So make sure that you have a tight line on it. guy was barely hooked barely just got him flipped up on the bank he's little but he's fat all these fish right here are fat for some reason i'd like to catch a big one that's fat today 
that's three today on the Whisker Series or the Whisker Rift Rod TWC and Sandy Cooper setup. Got a hit on this one behind me. You guys see that? I don't know if you guys saw that or not. Got him. Oh man, he's he's got me up and under something. I don't know if we'll get him out of there or not. Cutting the line on the crap. Oh man. Come on, get out of there, big guy. <laughs> Just when you think you get him out. Might be on decent. Can't tell yet. No, he. I can't believe we got him out of there though. That's pretty crazy. Whew. I cannot believe that we just got that fish. I literally about three quarters of the way in pulled him through something and frayed my line all to pieces if it would have been a big one we'd have broke off there i know it would have it's definitely a ton bigger than that last one but it, it's definitely not another giant though or nothing so oh i don't have any more line with me i'm just gonna throw that back out there and hope for the best hopefully we don't get hung up again or hit nothing because that's probably all it'll take to lose one on that rod today now. <coughs> Alright, let me get this one thrown out, get that one rigged back up, get it thrown out, and check the time. It's 9.43. I know I'm about to, oh my gosh. that rod tip bouncing it just kept on bouncing a little bit I knew he was gonna take try to get this one in here quick I really don't like coursing them in take a chance on popping off but the slide is pretty bad a whole bunch 
of either size cats out here today at this spot. For sure. 957. I bump this rod right here, or if I just get a bite on it. There's another one, guys. If there was, uh, if it was time to get some eater sized cats, today would be the day to be out here. They are definitely biting. So far, this series has been a ton of fun. I've really, really enjoyed this series. In the summertime, it is it's so hard to catch fish, and I really thought this would be a good time to do the series, just because it's a hard time to catch them and just see what it takes to catch them in the summertime so it, it takes time to catch them sometimes you get out here and uh, you catch a bunch of them now still got time to go hopefully we get a big one but i want to kind of tell you guys next week will be the last video for this series we'll, we'll go five spots and we're going to kick into another series and the first video of this series i told you guys i'll tell you a little bit about it later on so what's going to happen in the next series is we are going to start chumming for catfish do a series of that different ways to chum in and see if it ups the odds so the first one i'll tell you guys a little bit about it's kind of going to be some stuff that you just throw out there in balls and stuff uh, we're going to fish for an hour without chum throw out chum after that hour and then every hour repeat that just keep throwing it out there and casting pretty close to it at least in the area and see if it ups the odds um, I don't think that that chum that we're going to start in the first video will bring in catfish and want them to eat it. But I do think that it will bring in tons of bait fish and therefore hopefully bring in the catfish after those bait fish. So it should start like a little feeding frenzy is what I'm hoping to do. And again, every hour just keep throwing that stuff out there and seeing if it ups it. Uh, at the end of the hour, if it starts slowing down and we throw it back out there and it picks back up, uh, we'll know that that stuff works. And then different different techniques of chumming so those are going to be a few uh, videos long that'll be pretty cool and i'm kind of excited to see i've never done it and tested it out myself so i'm kind of excited as well to see if it uh, brings in more fish uh, if it starts to feed in frenzy uh, kind of what it does and kind of learn with it so i'm definitely looking forward to that series next so again next week will be the last series to this here kitty kitty part and then we're going to kick off with the chumming series so but for now, I'm going to try to still catch at least another catfish or two. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully a big one. I don't think I'm going to catch a big one, but I'm not surprised myself. Getting hit on a couple of poles here. Baitless here. This one's getting hit. This one's been hit. That one's been hit. That, they've all been hit. I'm going to check every one of these for bait. I don't think I brought enough bait today at all. I'm about out. I usually don't leave the camera running like this. I already ran out of one battery doing it, but this is so much going on and I can't keep up with myself. I'm gonna have to leave the camera going. Hopefully the battery that's in there will last for a little while. I, I ain't even got that one. I need to reel that Sandy Cooper bobber up. I see it trying to float out there. Oh, no, don't do it. 
fatty on the big rod. It's the first one on the big 12 footer today. Both the, all the other fish have been coming in the center. I got this one casted way over to my left here. That white one to the right and the two middle ones casted just pretty much straight out. Oh, let me get him out. Throw this bait out there. Reel that one up to uh, tight line and then check the top. If, if that, if we can do that without a fish taking off. Actually, while we're sitting here, I'm going to reel this one up. Bait back on these. I'm, uh, this is, I got one more shad other than this one, and they're small shads all I got today. So I'm only able to get like two sections out of it. We may run out of bait. If I can catch one on this one right here, guys, then I will have caught fish on all four rods. It has been forever since I've done that. Yeah, I would like to catch. I'm on this one before I leave. It's been a while since I've caught fish on every rod I brought that day. Oh yeah, time, time, time. It is 10.31. 10.31. The hotter that it's getting out here and the later in the day, it's 11.09 right now. It has slowed down a bunch. So basically where I'm at right here, is it gets kind of deep out there, 30 something feet. But it's a really good ways to get out there. It's a long, long drop. Uh, it's not one of those steep drops, it's just a long drop. I'm probably hitting around in 20 foot range, but we're getting out. It, it drops off down into a, a flat 30 something feet way out there and just stays 30, about 35 feet way out through there. Uh, they probably dropped off into it as the water's warmed up. I know I would, it's definitely getting hot. Maybe one or two more will sneak up here and get our bait before we leave. Hopefully a big one. It would be awesome to top it off with a big one, especially if it came on that rod on the end that we haven't caught nothing on yet. been a minute since we've had a bite. I reeled that, reeled this pole in, checked it for bait. It didn't have bait on it. But the reason I reeled it in is I haven't cast it to the left, but I can get this one out the furthest, the 12 foot early stick. Big water rod, and uh, I figured I'd try to get it right beside this Santa Cooper reef and keep it more straight. But I am getting it far, but it's been going far to the left. I got far straight out. I picked up a little bitty tiny top, guys. We'll do that again, see if we can get it out there again that far. Maybe get on another one. It's the only rod I can get out that far, though. You got a big five ounce weight on it. It'll support up to 12 ounces of weight. The rest of them nowhere near that, so. All I got left is tail sections. I'm not a big fan of tail sections. I got probably 10 tails there. That's all I got left. They're easy to swing off, easy for the fish to take. And they foul hook more than any other section of the bait. But when that's all you got, that's all you got. I don't know what the heck that thing is. Some kind of, it almost looked like a barge, but it had been sitting back in here the whole time. It's got like a, some kind of crane deal on top of it. There's a bunch of guys out there working on it. Working on something over on the bank. So I guess, I don't know, that may be... I don't know what that is. <laughs> I have a couple ideas, but I, I really don't know, so I'm not even going to say. If you guys know what they do with those boats, they're definitely using it to work on something because it's got a crane on it. But if you guys know for sure what that is, leave it in the comments. It's got all kinds of equipment and stuff on it. It is getting very, very hot. So I had a hit on that big rod that I've been able to get out there really far. I hit just real quick hit, but that is it. It is almost, it's 1230 almost and uh, I've not gotten no more hits. So the day has gotten hot and I believe the fish have went deep to where it's cooled off. I'm gonna head out and get ready for work. I'm gonna leave the camera rolling just in case 
something crazy happens while we're reeling this in. Um, if the video ends right here, then that means nothing crazy happened. If it's still going, then you might want to stick around because something kind of silly or crazy happened. Well. We were baitless here. Hey, buddy. Wouldn't you know it? Bayless. Hey, man. Bayless here, too. That's why we're not catching any fish. Son of a gun. And we're baitless here too. All I had left was tail. I'm telling you, those tails are are so easy to come off of there. If you don't sling them off, there's a pretty good chance they'll steal them off of there. Or if they try to hit it like this one got that one hit, they'll take it. Tail sections. I don't. This is what. This is what I'm telling you. This is all I leave. There's this little section of tail. And. Uh, I don't know, they just, just don't stay hooked very good. 